Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Not long ago I did a video on my relatively new two burner propane stove from Coleman, the Hyperflame Fry Sergeant, and I really liked it quite a bit. It's a great stove, but it doesn't have kind of the nostalgia and the flexibility of one of these older liquid fueled Coleman two burner stoves. If you look on the internet and you look on eBay, there are tons and tons, I mean tons, of different options and you really can get them pretty cheaply. You end up paying more for um, shipping than anything else. The question is, did I find out of all those available the best model you can get? Maybe I did. Stay tuned. We'll find out. Thanks for watching, guys. Now, the world of Coleman stoves and even lanterns is extensive, to say the least, and it is a lot of fun. It is a great community. I've had tons of fun over the last six or eight months just kind of diving into these older liquid fuel stoves or kerosene stoves, whatever. It is awesome. And there's just so much to learn and so much to figure out. I've said it on a couple of other videos before, but I will point out a website called oldcolemanparts.com. No affiliation to my channel at all, but very helpful. Very helpful in working on these old Coleman stoves. You can go in there and look through each, literally each model of stove that's been out there and then they'll tell you what they have in stock to fit that. Almost always you can find those, those hard to find seals or graphite packing, anything. If you have an old stove or if you decide to get an older stove and you wanna kinda of, you know, change some things, maybe get a new generator for some of these that are still available, whatever it might be, check out oldcolemanparts.com. Now almost all of these stoves, they're commonly called suitcase stoves because they look like a little green suitcase. They use a specific way of controlling the fuel. The valve system has two different components. One is a little knob that'll allow you to control the cleaning needle. The cleaning needle sticks in and out of the end of the generator. And that generator is what sits inside of the Bunsen. And that's what kind of makes the magic of transforming your liquid fuel into vapor, which is what you actually burn and that's what makes that nice blue flame. Along with that control for the cleaning needle, you have a separate control that actually is, is kind of like the gas control. It opens and closes the gas coming out of the pressurized fuel tank and going towards the generator. This, is, this allows you to kind of control the fuel a little bit because you can adjust how much fuel is actually leaving the tank and getting to the stove burner. So what makes this stove a little different? Well, it uses what is called the Easy Light Valve, kind of combines both those things into one. And oh, by the way, it also was only made in Canada. Let's check it out. Very quickly, we'll just talk about the specs on this stove. Dimensions are 17.25 by 11.25 by five. Uh, since it is Canadian, we'll just tell you it's 44 by 29 by 12 centimeters. I just weighed this thing. It's right at about nine pounds. That's got a little bit of fuel in it, so probably maybe eight and a half to eight and three quarter pounds. Not, not light. Made out of stainless steel, aluminum, brass. The generator number on this, which it states right here. Generator number, you can see this is model 431. 14,000 BTU generator is 412A-262. These stoves were made between 1976 and the mid 80s. Uh, there's a decal on the back I'll show you guys here in a second that changed in 1984. I cannot find a date stamp on this particular tank. All I see is the is the number five. I'll show you guys that here in a second. Looking at images online, I'm, I'm dating this between 1976 and 1980. I don't know for sure. The other thing is it came with the original instruction booklet, which is pretty cool. Also has this, this list of accessories you can buy. This instruction booklet is nice because it has uh, a parts breakdown which is very very handy you got all the parts here with the uh, part numbers and then a full instruction which is it's always cool to get stuff like this kind of full instructions if any of you guys are looking for something like this for the 431 there it is i'll leave it and you can screenshot it and maybe i don't know print it out this thing actually came inside of the original box it was pretty beat up but it did come inside of the original box. If you're wondering, I paid $40 for this stove, 40 bucks, $21 for shipping from Canada, so $61 all in on this stove, which I was very happy with. To be honest with you, I think I got a pretty good deal. Open it up for you guys real quick, and then we're gonna take a look at that Easy Light valve. Whenever we light it, I'll take you guys more through this stuff, but I might be able to 
scoot this forward enough. Yeah, there's the um, the decal on the back, Easy Light Coleman Canada, and uh, that's one of the things that helped me kind of date this just a little bit. And normally on these stoves, y'all will probably not be able to see this, but I'm going to try anyway. Normally on these stoves, you'll have a date code. All this stove says is five. It just has a five right there. If any of you guys know what that means, there might be on the very edge over here, there is something, maybe a three. I think that might be a three, but it is so hard to see. So out, way out here, there's a three, and then more in the middle, there's a five. This could not be a three. It could be an eight. Maybe that's an 85. That would work, I guess, wouldn't it? It doesn't seem like, you know, the sticker doesn't go along with an 85. But anyway, I cannot see a definitive date. Here is the easy valve. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to zoom in for you guys. There we go. And you can see how it cycles from off, light, high, and low. So instead of basically having a light and a run, which is the position of the cleaning valve, which a lot of the other shows will have one valve for that, this one cycles through it it's an eccentric valve you can kind of see you can see how it's eccentric pops there when you're in the light position it's like pulled out and that's pulling that cleaning needle out which allows the most fuel to come through and then you can go here and then when you go between high and low and, and low you're basically adjusting the amount of fuel that's coming through the system i'll put on the screen for you guys a little a little screenshot of how this eccentric valve works with this valve system you're not only able to control the cleaning needle like i said but also that little straighter valve that opens and closes and decides on how much fuel is flowing from the tank uh, it's a very simple system it was introduced by canadian coleman in 1973. like i said this allows you to run through the closed clean light and run settings in one single rotation let me set this thing up we're going to show you how it uh, how it goes and we're going to do a two cup bowl test
So does the Easy Light valve system make this the best liquid fuel two burner system you can get? As far as positives go, it is very easy to use, very easy to light. And I mean, it's got a certain cool factor. You know, you only have one knob instead of two controllers. It's pretty cool. Now the negatives are, it's pretty hard to find any, any parts for this. If something goes wrong, it's not gonna be easy to find the replacement part. And the anatomy of this valve is much more complicated. It's kind of easier to mess up if you take it apart. And then you get back to that first problem where if you mess something up taking it apart and you can't find the replacement, yeah, you see what I'm saying. To be honest with you, I don't think it really matters. I mean, these stoves, these suitcase stoves are universally loved. They're, they're easy to take care of, they're, they're readily available, they're inexpensive, and they just flat out work super well. Really doesn't matter what kind of knob system you have to control the fuel. I've done very minimal work to this stove. It was in very good shape. And I don't think I'm gonna do a whole lot more to it. I've, I've taken it apart completely. Uh, if you're interested in those kinds of videos, videos where I take stoves apart, disassemble them, um, clean them up really well and then reassemble them basically giving you a really good tutorial if you want to strip down your stove check out my second channel it's paleo maker MD I'll leave a link down below it allows you to um, have a different look at how I deal with these stoves anytime I get a old stove a vintage stove I pick it up off of eBay not every single one of them this is actually the very first stove that I bought that I can think of and I didn't do a full video on it for paleo maker I probably will go back and do that but I think more along the lines of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy a, a more classic American-made stove and get it, it's pretty rough. Get one that's pretty rough and I'm gonna go through the process in detail how to kind of bring it back to life. Anyway, if you're interested in that kind of stove, just, just subscribe to Paleo Maker. You'll see whenever I buy my next suitcase stove, a more traditional one, like I said, um, the regular valve system, you might say, and I'm gonna get it going. Um, should be fun. So which models of these suitcase stoves do you think are the best? Is there a reason I should get a specific model? Maybe a certain year range? Do you think certain things are better than others? Let me know down in the comments below. In the end, whatever model liquid fuel stove you get from Coleman, you're probably gonna be in, in pretty good shape. They, they are amazingly uh, easy to keep running. I do think it's a very good idea to pick up one of these stoves. You can go to, I mean, so many um, antique stores or flea markets and they'll have one of these stoves you can pick one up for 20 30 bucks pick it up and pick it up bring it home and put it as one of your emergency supplies and I'll tell you why because the fuel that it uses is is pretty universal now look you can run unleaded gas on these stoves the problem is is that it's going to gum up and really mess up your generator very quickly and you have to work really hard to keep it clean but you can use these as a dual fuel stove it's meant to be used with Coleman gas or white gas. And the good thing about Coleman gas or white gas, which really separates it from regular unleaded gasoline, aside from the fact that you can just buy it at the store in a little, in a little metal container, is that it's very clean. A lot of the impurities are taken out of it. What that means is that it runs your stove much cleaner. You don't have to worry so much about it gumming up. But more importantly, white gas stores for a long time. Typical unleaded fuel may last 60 or 90 days and then it's gonna to start to go bad and then it's gonna to start to really mess up your system, whatever it might be, whether it be your lawnmower or your car or your liquid fuel stove. White gas is very different. I have used, I, got, I inherited a Peak One 400 series stove from my dad. I know that that gas was in there for 20 years at least. I didn't add any fuel to it. I cranked it right up and it burned no problem. Most people will say the white gas will last at least 10 years. I would say it's at least more. If you store it in a reasonable environment, I think adding a couple of gallons of white gas to your preps, getting yourself a white gas stove like this, it just makes sense. Uh, it gives you one more option and you don't have to worry about certain situations where propane may be difficult to get or if you're using a wood stove, you know, the whole, the whole process that goes along with that. This is a good stove for emergencies. It's a good stove for camping. Pick one up. They're super inexpensive. You will not regret it. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them down below. I'm no expert, but I'm getting more and more versed in how these things work and how to troubleshoot them. So make sure you leave me a question down below. If you like the video, guys, make sure you hit the thumbs up. It really helps spread things across YouTube. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any videos, hit that notification bell and you will be the first to know. I love these vintage stoves. I've had a lot of fun with them. Every time I go to a flea market, I usually find one of these. 
and I just haven't found the one I want that looks exactly right. Usually they're missing something or, you know, I'm just going to wait until I get one I really, really like. And then we're going to fix it up over on the Paleo Maker MD channel. As always, guys, I appreciate you checking out my channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.